In the last year that I've been using Raycast, I have saved hundreds of hours worth of time. And in this video, I'm gonna share my five favorite features that allow me to be more productive on my Mac. Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. Now, about a year ago, I published a video, which we will link up here, sharing how to get started with Raycast on the Mac. If you've never seen Raycast before, definitely go and check out that video first. Raycast is essentially a launch app. Think of it as sort of a more powerful version of Spotlight, which is the built-in search application on the Mac. Now, in that video, I explained that I was actually a long-time Alfred user before finding Raycast, and it took me all of about 15 minutes after trying Raycast to make the decision to switch. And now that I've had Raycast for about a year, I want to share the, my five favorite features that bring me the most benefit, that save me the most time that I enjoy the most. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment down below. And if you are signing up for Raycast for the first time, use our affiliate link in the description. It will save you 10% and it helps support this channel. Now, the first feature that I use dozens of times every single day, and this is probably the one that saves me the most amount of time, is the clipboard history. Now, I've opened Raycast here using the command space shortcut on my keyboard. And if I do command comma, I can bring open the Raycast settings here. And actually you can see this is where you can configure how you launch Raycast. I'm using the command space. If I go to my extensions here, you'll see there is the clipboard history feature. And this clipboard history um, option here, I've actually set up a hotkey where if I type command space, excuse me, control space on my keyboard, it brings up my clipboard history. So this, this is text, links, images, and things that I have copied recently. Now, I don't know about you, but I often have to go back and find links, email addresses, just blocks of text that I've copied uh, if I want to use those again when sending an email or sharing something with someone. So I could be composing an email and I'm actually using MimeStream on the Mac. This is another great Mac app, by the way. Uh, I'll link up here my getting started with MimeStream video. Great Mac app if you are a Gmail user. And so here I am, I'm composing an email and then I can bring, I can use control space to bring up my clipboard history. And I can then type anything I want to search for text that I want to retrieve. So maybe I type the word Asana here. Um, here's some text that we've, I've used previously that I copied. You can see some details about when it was copied. And if I just hit return on my keyboard, you can see mime, uh, excuse me, Raycast then inserts that text into wherever I am typing. And when you access the, the clipboard history, if you, you can either click down here or use the shortcut command K. And there are a bunch of other options and things you can do with this text. I can paste this to MimeStream or paste and keep the window open. Uh, I can open the text in my browser. I can share this. Uh, to be honest, personally, I don't really use these options much. Um, my main use case is finding text and then I hit return to just insert that previously copied text wherever I need it. The next feature I absolutely love, and again, use this every single day, is if I have a meeting about to start, it will actually appear here in the Raycast window. So because I have Raycast connected to my calendar, you can see it's showing me here I have a meeting with John. This shows up uh, five or 10 minutes before my meeting. And so when I'm ready to join the Zoom event, I can just hit return on my keyboard. Raycast launches the Zoom app on my Mac. And here I go, I'm in the meeting. I can then just click start or turn on my camera and away I go. Um, so that's awesome because I don't have to go clicking through links in my calendar or finding the link in an email. I just, I know I have a meeting coming up, command space, hit return and I'm in the meeting. Now, this is set up in the calendar settings here. So again, we're on the extensions tab, come to calendar. You need to connect your calendar first, which I've already done. And then down here, you can see Raycast can check upcoming schedule from your enable calendars and join meetings. Now, because I share a lot of my colleagues' calendars, you can see I've turned those ones off, but Raycast will monitor the ones that I have ticked here. Down here, you can see it's gonna show events before or after they start within 10 minutes. 
If I want to find the appointment on my calendar, I've chosen to open it in Fantastical, which is the calendar app on the Mac that I use. Again, we'll link up here our getting started with Fantastical video. Hands down the best calendar I've used, much, uh, much better than the Apple calendar, in my opinion. And um, I can even automatically join meetings if I want. You can confirm first, but that's quite cool. Raycast can just launch the meeting for you at the right time. This is one of those features where, okay, if I'm realistic, it's not a huge time saver. You know, the alternative is just going to my calendar, finding the event and clicking a link, which isn't exactly time consuming, but it's a real nice to have. It's a real convenience when, like I said, I just hit that shortcut, command space, Raycast sees my upcoming meeting, hit return, and I'm in the meeting. No faffing around. It's just a really nice sort of little quality of life improvement. The next feature which I use every day to quickly find files or actually also to perform custom searches is the quick links feature. There's kind of two ways that you can use this. So here we are under the quick links uh, area in extensions. Now, firstly, you can see I've actually used quick links to favorite folders in the finder and actually even some files, you know, some spreadsheets here. And I can quickly open those files or quickly go into that folder using an alias. So you can see here this 2026 receipts folder. This is a folder where I store all my invoices and receipts. I often need to go in there to, to find a receipt. And so if I do command space to open Raycast, I can then type my alias. And there you can see because I've saved the 2026 receipts folder as a quick link, and I've actually set up an alias here, I can then hit return and it opens that folder on the Mac. So I use that a lot to access folders and files that I often need to get access to. I find it's just a bit quicker than going, you know, 2026 receipts, and then I have to search the files and wait for Raycast to search. It's a little bit slower. By setting up a quick link, it's just one less step and I can open that folder or file really quickly. So to create a quick link, first thing you would do is find the, uh, the folder or file that you want to save. So let's have a look here for Minaco logo. So you can see I don't have any quick links saved for this text. So I can search across my files and uh, Raycast has found this finder folder. And actually, if I go into my actions here, I can um, open the enclosing folder. And now I'm looking at the files within that folder. And so here is my um, logo that I want to save as a quick link. So if I go Command K again to bring up my actions and come down to uh, create quick link here, I can then go, I, I, can, I can save this quick link and I'm gonna save the name as, uh, actually we'll save, save it like that first. Um, we'll save the quick link. And now if I go back to my quick link settings in here, um, there's, there's the file that I just saved and I can add an alias. So I'm just gonna call this logo. And so now if I type logo, you see it finds that file really quickly. I hit return and it opens that file on my Mac. Uh, you know, again, just one less step, one less search I have to perform and I can get access to that file really quickly. The other use case for quick links is that you can set up your own custom search capabilities. So here's one that I've created for using Raycast to search for a YouTube video. So rather than having to open my browser, go to youtube.com and then search, I can simply open Raycast, type YouTube, and then I can put in a query here like Raycast and Raycast will open my browser and you can see it's actually searched for the word Raycast there and look, it's found my getting started video. So this is really cool. The way you can set this up is, let's say I wanted to do one now for um, Rumble. So if I go to the website where you want to perform a custom search, I'm just gonna type Raycast here into Rumble. And now what I'm gonna do is just grab this URL at the top. You see it's actually got rumble.com slash search slash search. And then it's put the search query Raycast in the URL. This is how most website searches work is they just put the search query into the URL. So with that URL saved, to create my quick link, I'm gonna open Raycast and type quick. And you can see here it's suggesting create a quick link. Uh, the quick link name, I'm gonna name as search rumble. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste in that um, URL that I just copied. 
And now I'm going to remove the word raycast because I don't want to search raycast every time. And you can see here, I can include dynamic placeholders um, and I'm going to use the squiggly bracket and then type the word query. So whatever I type into Raycast will get inserted into that URL. Uh, I'm going to keep my default browser as Safari and the icon, it's actually identified the, Raycar, uh, the Rumble favicon there. So let's now save that quick link. And so now that I've saved my quick link, if I type the word Rumble, um, you actually have to tab to move the cursor over to the query, which I don't like. So actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back to my settings here. Let's go down to that quick link. There it is, the one that I just created. And I'm going to add an alias, which I'm just going to use is the word rumble. Now, I can actually just do a space. I don't have to tab. I just like a space. So I go rumble, raycast. It opens my browser and it searches for the word raycast. So this is really nice. And we've used this actually to create custom searches for um, different websites in my business. So I've actually got a folder of um, quick links that we have attached to our Minaco organization. And you can see here, we've created custom searches for searching across our WordPress site. If we want to search for a blog post, a customer, a discount code, I can search Stripe, my payment processor. I search ConvertKit, actually that's now kit. They've rebranded. And so now if I type the alias sub, I use the sub for subscriber, I can now type pool at minorco.com, you know, someone's um, email address. So it's gonna do the custom search on kit and it opens kit. Here's the, the, um, the page in my browser. You can see it's put that um, search query into the URL up there and it's found this subscriber for me. This is another one of those features where on its own, it doesn't seem like it saves you that much time, but when you're doing these kind of searches, if we're searching for subscribers or payments or blog post content, uh, and you're doing that dozens or even hundreds of times a week, you're saving a little bit every single time. You know, I don't have to open my browser and go to ConvertKit and type in search. I can just search very quickly using Raycast and that might save me, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. But when you compound that, over hundreds of times, it actually is a material difference. Now, my fourth favorite feature is the integration with CleanShot X. One of my favorite things is when two Mac apps that I use work really well together. Now, CleanShot is a screen recording and capturing app for the Mac. It's a bit like Loom, if you've ever seen a Loom video before. It basically lets you record your screen or, or take screenshots and annotate them really quickly and easy. Another brilliant Mac app I've been using for a while, and I'll link up here my getting started with CleanShot video. I use CleanShot all the time to record videos that I send to our clients if I'm showing them how to do something. So CleanShot, amazing app. Now CleanShot has an app on the Raycast store, which you can download, and I've set it up here in my Raycast app. So once you download that extension, you get these clean shot options here. And this makes it very quick and easy to start a new recording, to capture items. You can see I can OCR text. I've, I can look at my recent capture history. I can do scrolling captures. There's lots of useful things I can do. And the integration just makes using the clean shot app a lot quicker and easier. And the one that I use the most is the record screen option. So I, and I've, I've set up the alias here CS for clean shot. So what I can do is I can be on my Mac, open Raycast, type CS, and then I can start recording. And so you can see here, I can now uh, select part of my screen. And now I'm using the, the CleanShot app. Uh, I'll just choose my uh, microphone here. I can choose my webcam. And so now I can hit record. I can make my little screencasting video, hit stop when I'm done. And uh, now CleanShot is going to copy a link to that video to my clipboard, which I can then send to a client via an email or something. Um, but yeah, I love this integration because it's an app, another app that I use dozens of times a week. And the fact that it works really well with Raycast is a big win for me. My fifth and final favorite feature of Raycast is the AI integration. This is one of the paid features, uh, but this is great because it means I can start a chat or ask AI something without having to go to a particular um, you know, chat GPT or perplexity window, I can actually just ask the AI something directly from Raycast. So you'll find the AI settings here under the AI tab. 
And you can see I can trigger asking AI something by just by hitting the tab key from Raycast. I can choose between different AI models if I want. I'm just using ChatGPT4 and I haven't upgraded, but there are some other uh, models that you can choose from. And so uh, if I close this now, and so now if I open Raycast and hit my tab key, I'm now starting an AI chat. So I could ask something like, what are some productivity tips to help with procrastination? So I'm going to ask ChatGPT, and this is all now being done inside Raycast. I don't have to go to a separate browser, and I can get this, this response from ChatGPT. I've got some options here if I want to copy this to my clipboard, uh, ask a new questions, or I can actually continue in chat, and then you can open this separate window. You can keep the conversation going. So I could say, you know, what if I struggle with goal setting? You know, ask a follow-up question, and I can keep going here inside this separate window. If you go to the um, extensions tab and under the A uh, Raycast AI section here, you'll see all the different commands you can perform. Uh, I can create new chats. I can change the tone if I want the AI to sound more casual or confident. Um, I can make text longer or shorter, rephrase as a tweet. So there's all these little commands you can play with as well. So those were my five favorite features of Raycast. If you've also been using Raycast a while and you think I've missed a really important, useful feature, leave me a comment down below. I love learning from you guys and seeing what things I might have missed. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.